I started a, a Syria army uh, dwelling in his presence, and I have to hold on because of the anniversary uh, program. But today I want to conclude. I think I'm doing the part two today, uh, dwelling in his presence. And I made some profound statement last time that many many of us got we, we've gotten it wrong any time we're talking about dwelling in his presence. Uh, uh, you can't just come to worship at the church, lift up your hands, and believe you are in his presence. Dwelling in the presence of God has something more to do with the spiritual understanding. You need to understand spiritually what you have been called to do. You need to have a spiritual understanding. We have a lot of people who go to church and even in worship time, they are th thinking about what they are going through and why they have to worship for God to descend for them. But dwelling in His presence has, has more to do with, I mean, exhorting Him and letting Him know who He is. And the fact that as we come before His presence, we are coming not as sinful people, nature. We are not embodiment of sin, but we are coming in the right frame of mind. We are coming with the right spirit to give him reverence. Amen. Yeah. Dwelling in the presence of God simply means dwelling in his will. And this scripture, many people read, we, I quite remember when our mothers were growing up, they would open this verse and put it under the pillow and they believe it's a myth and it works for them. Nothing that is concerned with God will not work. And Psalm 91, they hoping that the, the psalm will protect the baby. All of us were victims of that. But I think it has helped us. And that's why we are still strong. Amen. Psalm 91, and that is my key scripture for this morning. There are conditions in there that I want to share with you. Dwelling in the presence of God means walking in his will. That word in his presence here has to do in his will. And what is the will of God? 1 Corinthians 2.16 tells us that we have the mind of God. And the mind of God is the will of God. What is the mind of God concerning your life? What is the mind of God concerning your work with God? And it is very, very important. David wrote this scripture with, with a lot of sensitivity, knowing where God has picked him from and where God is taking him. And I want you to understand that this scripture has certain conditions if you really want to walk in the presence of God. And I also mentioned that walking in the presence of God is not emotional presence. And what we encounter in the church this day is that people go through emotional presence. They lift their hands and begin to sing and make a lot of uh, noise and worship and cry. You see people rolling on the, gro the ground because our oh, Ikea too is rolling. He sees the face of Yah and says, oh, the way Yah is worshiping and crying. Then he also start crying. So we do a lot of gymnastics these days in the church. And, and God is not in that at all. God is not a God of, I mean, his presence is not an emotional presence. That you think that when you cry your heart out, you cry and cry and shed tears and you share unto your soul is satisfying or sharing tears. That means God has come through for us. No, it doesn't work like that. It goes beyond that. Pre dwelling in the presence of God has to do with a lot of discipline. Are you hearing me? Yes. There are a lot of people today that even the word of God can correct. If you're a pastor... It say, rebuke somebody with the word of God. You will come to church the next day. Dwelling in the presence of God has to do with availing yourself for correction. Availing yourself for divine correction. And as you are corrected divinely, you realize that things are... I've seen people who, I mean, dwell in the presence of God and they don't do, make any noise. But God is working for them. Dwelling in the presence of God is your level of understanding to the word of God. Amen? There are people who make a lot of noise and speak in big tongues and, and, and make noise in the area. God is not in that tongues. Why? Because dwelling in his presence has to do with what Paul said in Romans chapter 12. That you may, you may, you may set aside your body. It has something to do with discipline with the body. How you control yourself. Amen. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. This defines what I'm talking about. The presence of God. So you see, dwelling, uh, I mean, being in the presence of God, dwelling in the presence of God has a condition. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. In other words, if you really, 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 really want to enjoy the presence of God, he that walks in the will of God, the secret place has to do with the will of God. The secret place has to do with where God is. Amen? So anytime you dwell in the secret place, it means you are in the will of God. So I want to sum it this way. He that dwelleth in the will of God shall enjoy the presence of God. 
The shadows of your mighty is the covering of God. And the covering of God is the presence of God. It means God is there. We are having a lot of churches that God is no more there. What we are doing is structure. What we are doing is uh, we praise the worship, then we move to this, and we move to that, then we close church. So the people that come walk in that structure, and they are not prepared. You know, there are a lot of people come to church, they don't care anymore about spirituality. They don't care anymore that I need to keep myself holy, so that by the release of God's word, I connect to the presence of God. So people come to church to fulfill all religious curiosity, but they are not in church because they want to have touch with God. I pray that your conscience will change today. I pray that that will not be your mindset. Because anybody that comes to church, anybody that runs to church, it means you have a relationship with God and you cherish it so much that you want to have an encounter with him. I told you in the, the, old, in the old Testament, God descends to the throne room. God descends to Eden. God, Adam doesn't go to heaven. God descends to Adam to talk with them and to have fellowship with them. But after the fall of man, that condition was taken away. Now, what we are doing now is to act. So that when God pleases with our act, he descends and come and show himself. So it means that if this is our act of worship, what you are acting is different from originality. Acting is different from originality. So whenever you hear the act of worship in our time, it means the originality has been cancelled. The originality started with Adam. And when Adam fell, God bring a new condition. And the condition was written in 1st John 1-12 that he that believed in now, he gave them the power to become. So when you receive the power to become, now you need to ask for God to come and visit you. And all that we're doing now is the act of worship. Leaving your house, coming, we live, lifting our, our hands and somebody singing and we're trying to connect to the song and, and worship God. We are acting so that if it pleases the Lord, he may descend and favor us. But you see, even in our acting, people are faking the act. And please, when I tell you, I'm faking the act, you are singing all right. You have lifted all, all your hands all right, but you are fighting with somebody in your heart. You just insulted somebody before coming to church. You just fought yesterday. You just fornicated yesterday. You gave a man who is no man to room, romance kisses, and you are in church. And the same lift you kiss, the same lift you are faking to worship God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. So you see, what we call the presence of God, this generation is missing it. But I tell you, there are few of this generation who are dying to connect to God. Who are dying to love God. Who are dying to have an access with God. And nothing can change their mind. But majority are also dying to love the world. Are also romancing with the devil on their bed. And on Sunday, they pretend to sit here so that they will worship. And what they are doing, they are just doing that to satisfy their conscience. Not to acknowledge God in his presence. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your word. Uh, somebody said, you present your word. Your bodies as what? A living sacrifice. sacrifice huh? what, what is it? Holy. Take it one more time from the top. Ready, go. I beseech thee. Uh -huh. I beseech you, therefore, comma, brethren, comma, by the mercies of God, comma, that he may present your bodies a living sacrifice, comma, holy, comma, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So it is not about presenting yourself in church alone. Coming to church and wearing that fitting dressing and sunshine and giving a good perfume. God is not interested in that. He said when you present your bodies before me, by the mercies of God, you may present your bodies. No, the bodies must be a living sacrifice. So you just don't present your body. Listen, a do you know what I mean, a living sacrifice? You present before God your bodies, blameless bodies. You finished 13 bottles of Guinness yesterday. Mess up yesterday. Your body is not a living sacrifice. So God is what is God is looking for the totality of your being. He said, present your bodies. Your body sitting now. A 
living sacrifice. What it means is that when it is, and thank God, when it is Saturday, when it is, it is the time for our brothers and Muslims to fast, they know what is wrong. They know what is not wrong, what is right. And God is saying that you will not just mess up on Saturday and come to church on Sunday. But when it is coming to Sunday, you present. So if there's an error from Monday to Friday, you spend the time present, asking for God's mercy before you come here on Sunday. Living sacrifice. The next one is what? Holy. Holiness in our time. In our time, we can, by grace, maybe by grace and mercy, we can find one or two virgins. Oh, don't look at me like that. Now, if a young person, a person tell you, I'm a virgin, it means that he has not seen a man yet. Or maybe a man has not convinced, but very soon, the virginity is for one month or one year. Very soon, you ask and they cannot give you the same answer. I'm not, that's not my message this morning. That's not, I just touched there. Holy! Holy! So, you see what it means? Before we come to the presence of God, our bodies must be in the position of holiness. In the Old Testament, you present yourself with, when you mess up. You'll be struck dead. The angel of the Lord will strike you dead. And that is what Paul saw in the current church. That people mess up and come. And he said, should, should we continue sinning that grace will abound? Romans chapter 6. That grace should abound. No, no, no. You are deceiving yourself. God will forgive you today. But that justice will still come out. And the reason why many of us, we cannot see, we cannot receive testimonies anymore is because there is something that is stopping us from receiving that testimony. We defile ourselves, yet we believe God for a miracle. I pray for somebody. Uh, I know you don't love this message, but that is the message God has given me. I pray for somebody that the Lord will bring you to a place where you have revelation, revelational knowledge about your relationship with God. Listen, all this thing I'm talking about has to do with your relationship with God. I have a different relationship, you know, because I'm a pastor. Well, what made me a pastor? If and every one of us, the Bible says we are royal priesthood, we are pastors and we are we are prophets. And, but you see, another dimension that lifts you to another level for men to distinguish you as a man of God or a woman of God is your deeper relationship with God. Listen, if all of you should take it up that you want to have a correct relationship with God, eh, you will prophesy more than I do. You will preach better than I do. You will pray better than I do because, you see, listen to me, it is a general gift things God has given. First Peter 4 10, as each one of you has received a gift, minister. So each and every one of us has a gift. But what will make your ministration effective is your relationship with God. Oh, please, you cannot say you dwell in the presence of God when your character is different from what you are seeing. Dwelling in his presence, it must be with holiness. Oh, don't just go back to my scripture for me. First uh, Romans 12, verse 1. Holiness, it means appear before the Lord with the living body, bodies that are living sacrifice. It means sanctified and it must be holy. And not only holy, look at what the next thing says. Is that what? Oh, it's, it's, it's on the ball. Okay, let's take it one more time from the top. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that ye may present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. And the next one is what? No, can I shock you? So we can come to church, but many, not many of us will be accepted. Hello? <laughs> Maybe I, I didn't say read again. Very soon I say, media team, let's get the, a tree this in there. <laughs> so that at least, a gang one, so that we can have, yes. But it said, holy and what? Acceptable unto who? Unto Pastor Tiana. <laughs> acceptable what? So it means that you can be here and you are not acceptable. You cannot be accepted. Somebody say, Pastor, why? How? That's the word of God. So you presenting your bodies in church, it must be holy and that holiness must be qualified by God and if it is qualified by God, it will be accepted by it will be accepted by it will be accepted by if it is qualified by God, it will be accepted by so your bodies must be holy and it must be acceptable by God, then when it is acceptable by God, it becomes your reasonable service. Oh. 
If I use the word now, they say I've insulted you. But this is a very polished insult. It, it will become what? Okay, let's read it. I said, I will finish that statement. He said, What? Let's, okay, let's start from holy. Ready, go. Holy. Uh huh. Who is, which is your word? Your word? So there is an unreasonable thing. No, no, this is a police insult. Oh, because Pastor Tony didn't say it. <laughs> oh, do you see that? This is beautiful. You see that? Yes. No, oh, you can't see. This is your reasonable. That means, why do you hear Juma? That's why I said I'll put the tree, tree Bible there. Bible <laughs> there. When you say you, you are not reasonable at all, what are you telling the person? With Jimmy and Kasa and Kasa. Is that not the case? Oh, is somebody here? If I tell you, you are not reasonable, what am I trying to say? Oh, please. I know you understand. Big man, when I say you are not, you, you are, you are not, eh? You are not thinking right, right. You are not thinking rational. You are not thinking right. If I say, Master, Master, you are not, you are not reasonable at all. So what God is saying that you may come shake your bum but it will be unreasonable service. Because all that, the gymnastics and the dancing, you may dance better than anybody in the church, but God will see your dance as unreasonable. Why? Because your bodies are not acceptable. Your body, you are not holy. Ah. Oh, what's about holiness? Why? Is it about fornication? No. Forget it. It is part of it. But forget it. When we talk about holiness, the word holiness simply means living according to the word of God without fault. Ah, is that so? Then we've been seeing you and we are not perfect. Yes. God knows you are not perfect. So he qualifies you by telling you your righteousness is like a filter rat. But in that, he said that that we may work ourselves into perfection. First Peter chapter, we may uh, for we may work ourselves into perfection. To perfection. So I myself, I am not, I am not righteous, but I am working myself into perfection. So what it means that there are things God expects me not to do. In fact, there are things God expects me to know. If you say you are an accountant, there are things I'll see, questions I'll ask you. It will qualify whether you are accountant or not. Oh, you are accountant, you can't, you can't calculate uh, MPV. I said, give me some of the formulas of accounting, and you are telling me something strange. You are a farmer. You go to the farm with the class. Every genuine farmer you see is always holding class and who? Every medical doctor you see, what do you see? What are the signs you see on the medical doctor? Huh? The what? The what? I can't hear that. Someone saying the stay dumb. Someone say, you see they can stay dumb. Huh? Eh? Settle school. And what again? Huh? Eh? And white coat. <laughs> when you see a teacher, what do you see? Red pen. <laughs> when you see a fetish priest, what do you see? When you see a priest, what do you see? Huh? When you see a banker, what do you see? You see money. When you see a, a baker, what do you see? You see bread. Is that not? You see flour. Perfect. Perfect. If I see you, what should I see? No, forget yourself. What, are you, what do you do? If I see the righteous, what, do, what should I see? What should I see? Bible problem with two years in everybody. We open. Now, people come to church, even carrying Bible is a shame. The last time you open the Bible is when I'm quoting another scripture today. How can you say you are a priest, you don't pray? You are a priest, you don't read the Bible. You are a Christian, and you can look at me and say, and one, why, and one, why, why, maybe a Bible, you can't say, oh, 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 o
Oh, but pastor, son, say, me, me say, but, but what shows that you are a genuine Christian? Ah, you can tell me the color of your girlfriend. You can call me, tell me the perfume of your boyfriend. You have been buying, and when you want to call him for more money, you know what to buy. You can tell me even the color t-shirt of your, your boyfriend. You can tell me the color. You can tell me what he wants and what she doesn't want. You know all these things, but you cannot quote a scripture for me. You cannot even give me 10 scriptures. You say you're a Christian. You are more than 10 years in the church. Meanwhile, when the devil come in the dream, you want to disturb my sleep. I make a new resolution today. The righteous shall live by faith and not by fear. You don't call me again when you can quote Christians. Cockroaches are chasing you and you are calling a pastor. Are you alright? I am here to tell you the righteous the righteous my friend, the presence of God must be everywhere. Yes. True. He that dwelleth. It is a he that sit and go away. It is a he that visit and go away. So please, can I shock you? Coming to church on Sunday is a visit. Walking with God is a daily affair. Am I speaking to somebody? Coming to church is a visitation. We all don't live here. We all don't sleep here. Two hours, we are out of this place. You cannot use two hours to please God and expect billions to be released in two hours. Can I shock you? The breakthrough you receive is not as a result of this two hours prayer you pray. Any breakthrough you receive is as a result of prayers and walking right with God. And the time, I, 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 something gets dropped. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, listen. I heard the Holy Spirit saying, Tell them this before what you call them. The reason why many of us are breakthrough is not coming is because when you start well and heaven started processing your breakthrough, the week for your breakthrough, you go gaga and you go out, you become wretched and you live in sin. So the angel that is sent is an angel of holiness and he has sent with the parcel of holiness. So by the time the angel packed and he said, I am ready to shoot all oh my Yahweh, set me immediately. The Angel is giving a pass to visit you. The angel come and you are messing up. So he stands afar off and say, Yahweh, I cannot go. For where else you send me, they are full of sin and rubbishness. God said, come back until he is ready. So God is not unfaithful. But every now and then, when we pray and we start preparing, that is when we fool at the verge of our miracle. I'm asking to somebody here. Somebody, when you need something, see how you are. You fast and pray. At the time, God wants to answer. Uh -uh, that's why you have given up. I'm on I'm in Ushi. Let me go and take my guineas. I miss my guineas. The day you took one guineas, God said, Thank you. And you return. I pray that you will walk in His will. I pray that the presence of God will be everywhere. We have people come to church. 50 for God. 50 for. 50 for who? 50 for God. Give what is for Kaza to Kaza. So far as we live in the world, we are part of cases. And uh, a, a gentleman called me and his argument was that if the Bible says in First Corinthians 4, 4 that the God of this world has blindfolded and then God is not the God of this world and Lucifer is the God of this world, then why are we in this world and always fighting for us to escape the Lucifer? Because it's all that's true and give what is Lucifer to Lucifer. I said, what a philosophy. This is a very nice package by the devil in your mind. <laughs> I say yes. That what God is telling us is setting out for the consciousness. And I told him, okay, read Colossians chapter one. He say, he said, though we are of this world, we don't belong here. So in as much as the world belongs to the enemy, you are here, but you are not here. You are an ambassador to make sure those who have been entangled by the devil, you change their mind. into. The, and that is why people are crying that there is poverty. Others are bad. In fact, today, somebody just released a new car today. These few minutes I'm talking to you. The person just released a new car. So whilst we are crying woo, some are releasing new car. Why? Because though they are not Christians, you might know, they are not Christians, they are not believers, they have tuned themselves to dance according to a worldly system, a godly system that is not of God. And they are making impact. They can kill for money. So if you are seeing them releasing, and your prayer is that, oh God, I've been praying, I know you see all these unbelievers, they are, they are correcting you, car. We are serving you, ah. You are serving God, ah, with the wrong decision, with the wrong principle. Just serve God, ah, by applying the principles of God. But I
pray the word of God. Praise. It is not enough to break tongues and pray. And you don't read the Bible. You don't study the Bible. Because when you are frustrated, the book that will give you encouragement is the word of God. But you read the Bible twice a week. Twice. One month. One month. When you have problems and things are basa basa. Then you are flipping the Bible to see. With quotation, within 10 minutes you are frustrated. Because you don't know where to flip. Because you don't know the manner you carry. But when you have bought a TV, there is a manual. You know to own the TV is to press. A manual gives you an icon. Press here to get channels research here. It is easy to solve that problem. The word of God is your channel. The word of God is your processing material to help you walk in the presence of God. Believers, we are no puppet. Too. We are no poor, my brother. If a worldly person, an atheist, can use the Bible to be creating computers and selling computers and making money, how much more you who claim that you are? Oh my God. I may argue with my son, Eben, here. Do all the but when we enter the banking system, forget it. Because I don't know the principles over there. I may have an upper hand when it comes to the Bible we discuss. Because probably maybe the insight of or the knowledge of the Bible has not got into mind. But when we enter his terrain, I hope you are getting me. I have to shut up. When I enter General's terrain, military, I call everybody officer. <laughs> if not for this, I would have been killed because you can't go and call any There are ordinary uh, rank, so so and so rank. But when I say, oh, officer, how are you? I'm offending somebody. But they know that I'm ignorant. I hope you are getting me. I'm calling general, general. General, he has passed the rank general. But that word keep not come. So I, I know he's a general in the spirit. So many maintain. So he said, I am so so and so, aka general. As I say, but when I enter the terrain, they take me, when they salute me, I don't know whether they're people. Even the one at the gate can finish me before I enter. So let me close my message by asking you, what terrain are you? What rank are you? Because even when Jesus, let's say if Jesus is Bermaka, is Jesus terrain in Bermaka? He said, I belong to Jesus. I am Jesus one. I'm the righteous one. They put you at the entrance of Bermaka. By three soldiers, you see, you'll be running away. Because you might not even know when they say enter. Because how can I say I live in Bermaka? I'm a military man. I'm a general. I'm a, I'm a brigadier general in uh, Bermaka. Then I enter my own Bermaka. And I don't even know where my office is. They are saluting. Please, all the president without their two notes and whatever they do, they are trained when they enter the office. And watch them. Anytime a new president takes it, when they are commanding and they are saluting, he is a novice. He walks in. Mm -hmm. He is told, President, you don't take two steps at a time. Take one. Mm -hmm. Then stand there. Take two. When you mess up, the next step, you mess up a little bit. Next time, don't. President, you don't take Kelly Willie in, when, no, in public. You don't do that. President, only nothing. Say, hey, Say, I'm President, don't do that. Our president will eat it can -can with people with people in the villages for election. When he finishes, he doesn't go there. He even sees them. Hey, no, no, the only idea can the And then he said, Mr. President, not again, you are a president. So the woman say, Oh, Mr. President, oh no, be an only bad you can kill. And then they will me. Now me home, Papa. And he cannot insult, he cannot speak back. He can't say, and yeah, me oh. In your office, no, it is even a fallacy. It's a foolishness to say at your level of president to say, Oh, mama, come ever by this so you must say mommy indeed. You cannot say that. You cannot say that. <laughs> you said you are the righteousness of God. How many righteousness we have in house? You are the righteousness of God, as the Bible says. Lift up your hands. You are the righteousness. Oh, you have afraid. Oh, the Bible says we are the righteousness of God. You've heard that scripture. How many of you have heard that scripture? Okay. Okay, let me make it. Easy. The Bible says we are the children of God. <laughs> How many of you have heard we are the children of God? And that one you know. How can you say you are the children of God? 
They take you to your father's father, I mean, palace and you don't even know where we are. Hello? Are we in church? Am I blessing somebody here? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of no matter. I know you can quote that scripture very well. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortune. Do you know why you have the command to say? Because you are always in His presence. Listen, when you walk in the presence of God, situation don't melt you. Situation toughens you. Am I speaking to somebody? You heard Pastor Isaiah on Friday telling us that in, in times like this, this is where worship, this is where the righteous is seen by our worship. This is where you lift up your hands and say, Lord, we love you. If you are a genuine Christian, there are certain questions you ask, God, God, why me? God, why me? Why me? I have done this. I have done that. I have done that. Please, God doesn't like that anyway. Look at me. I give more offering. Do you know what others are giving? Can I tell you something? If God has to look at our offering, you, by the time your turn for a miracle comes, <laughs> it will be, we are in 2022, 20, eh? maybe it will be 40, 40 something. <laughs> hey! Hello? <laughs> But Uncle Badatan, what was she and any other powder? If God had to, oh, do you know the kind of offerings others are giving? Somebody just dropped an offering in the offering bowl. Huh? 150,000 Ghana cities. By the time they pay you, pay you, pay you, pay you, one year, two years, three years, only oh, yeah, half of that money. <laughs> Your offering is just 10 cities. It is not even the tithe of the person. Am I saying? No, if we want to look at the reality, God, God will see things differently. But if you have to depend on money, so the person drop only offering, I didn't say tight, offering of 150,000 Ghana cities, which is how many years of your salary? So, by the time you pay your tight, let's say, let's say they, they even pay you 10,000. Let me, may you receive that salary. You see, your amen is sweet, but you don't believe it. Even they get pay you ten thousand, your tithe is thousand, 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 thousand. By the time you even finish paying the the tithe to cover his one Sunday offering, the next Sunday he drop another one fifty. So by the time you finish certainly his offering, to think about the person's tithe, you are finished. But God doesn't look at it like that way. He looks at our heart, and he says, "For the act of worship through offering." I have to bless this one. I pray for you that you will not walk under pressure in the flesh. Talk as the worldly people talk. Talk as things are bizarre. But you will come to the realms of his presence. Because in the presence of God there are liberties. Favors forevermore. Blessings forevermore. If I were you. In this tough time I will connect to his presence. I will stay in his presence. And that is one thing David is able to do very well. And God said, this is the man after my heart. Do you know why? Even in the valley of Parazim, when the Philistines have encamped around him, his enemies have come around him, and he saw that where he is, there is no way he can survive. Even in the valleys, he was asking for God's direction. Lord, I tell this place to be your presence. Show me what to do. And he began to worship God. And the Bible says he heard the Lord saying, I will direct you and you shall overcome this thousands of people. He said, Lord, how can you do it? Because my life is going to be washed away. He said, no. When you hear the trees wave, the waves of the trees going this way, it means the enemies, I am taking a distraction. Move that way. And somebody that thousands have surrounded him in the valley of Parazim. The Bible said the strength of the Lord came upon him. And one man destroys everything. And he escaped the wrath of the enemy. There are situations that man cannot help you. But when you find yourself in his presence, he gives you a new strength to maneuver your way out. It gives you an ability to see. Listen, if not for the grace of God, tell it, but this is salary. Look at what is happening. Duade, Duade is even, if dollar is affecting Duade. I'm not speaking in tongues. You know Duade? Cassava. Because of the dollar, that the dollar, so the cassava. Tomatoes, dollar is affecting tomatoes. I 
I watch the video. I can see that. If not for God who held the, the heart of that woman, he would have cast the one. He bought the food. He bought a penny, three CD, and then the stew. Three CD or so. And you can see she was hurt. Say, Ghana for. How can I buy a penny? A penny with three CD. A penny with three CD. Oh, then I will go far away. A penny with three CD. Now, dollar so can't penny. Dollar can't penny. The woman was passionately speaking. I look at the woman. And I said, no. Please, if you're a market woman, you'll be born again. I went to a, a farm with a friend, Pastor uh, Reverend Barton, who is a farmer. And, and a, a man, a woman, came and they were giving him sack of cones and all those things. And he took a phone. Many miles. When they have built a whole sack of cassava for 150 Ghana cities, a whole sack of cassava, many man he took the phone. Eh, 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 Mr. Kaun, hmm. Now, send your number, eh, I could find your back, oh, yeah, oh. Send your number, cassava, hey, cassava for the. What the, 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 we are the one killing ourselves. Asa, cassava. You bought the thing one fifty, five fifty, and you know when you do that and it is on God here, you are you are you are you are you are, you are finishing the investment of blessing your generation to come to get. You are chopping it today. God will make sure He will demand it. Master, I need to come but it is, it is not it is not the way it's going. So if you are here and you are also taking advantage of the dollar, may, may God, may God, by the mercy, by the message, change your mind. Walk or talk, make up kids. And then you know, you know, five hundred, five hundred. That can do about fifty or sixty people. And then. You, you join all the price for one face. Oh, two dollar no. I did so. Nyaman, nyaman e fano. Nyadi bano dollar ne kano. I do we na kami tono. No, I can't throw. I did a two city. See now me tono be ten city. See see I now fifteen city, eighteen city. The Gary that he used to do. Listen. The, no, no, go Gary. The the the, the gra, granite, granite or mochichiri granite. A year fifty percent. The same granite is one CD. Nana wuna abreu. Kaso uwa kaso udobo. They say Ghanaians are on the edge. They are very edgy. So any word you say, no, they will pick against you. Yeah, can we do? Philippines, why not? It's it's you. They say, "Any man who can, what you know, can." I see this campaign today. See, that's what she said. I didn't say. It. And also Ghanaians, I pray that in this tough situation, we will find the presence of God. But tell you, in the presence of God, you receive solace. In the presence of God, you'll be encouraged. In the presence of God, when others are crying, whoa, you are saying, Lord, I thank you for how far you have brought me. Ah, the thing came, but you are still eating food. Are you not still eating your favorite? Didn't you chop your favorite? Ah, uh ah. -uh. This Saturday, I chopped one well, well, well. I realized that time. In yes. No, when, when we are not in the street and you are eating, it's very nice. <laughs> yes. I realized that no, it's not a fasting day for me. After I stressed the, the day around 2 33, then I, I, I went to my base, my bag went to that. And you know, I really, in fact, I chop it well. By now, I have I have degree, I have first degree, second degree, I have a postdoctoral degree in tilapia. So when you invite me, your tilapia is not nice. I won't say it, but when you call me, I say, I don't come again. No, that your tilapia. Sure. When I wired, I realized that mm, all my senses are working well. In the flesh, yes. In the spirit, we don't need to love it. Amen. I pray for you. Shall we be on our feet?